People often ask me or are surprised when I tell them that I've never been in a relationship before. And they're like, why? Don't you want one? Like, I'm confused. It's been 21 years. So she's never been in a relationship before. But as as these chicks always leave out when they, they brag about it. I never, I'm 28, I'm 35, 40. Never been in a relationship before. They always leave out the part like, okay, but how many guys have you slept with? Is it the, is the number zero? Because the number should be zero if you've never been in a relationship, right? No, they leave this entire part out, right? They leave it out. And honestly, that would be a great flex if it was zero. Like, yeah, I'm a virgin. I have not, not only have I not been in a relationship at 21, I've not never had sex with a guy. I am a virgin, right? Of course, you would get attacked to no end by mostly other women going, you lying bitch, liar, because like, you know, so many of these, these females are uh, like have been ran through on the carousel. So the last thing they want to see is a, a woman who has purity. But she doesn't mention that. She's like, I've been single for 21 years. Uh, okay, how many guys have you slept with? That's that's the elephant in the room that guys want to know. It's not that you've been single for 21 years. We rather we care less about that. All we care about is how many dudes have you slept with. Then afterwards, after you give us that number, hopefully it's zero. And uh, you want to tell us you've been single for 21 years? Even better. Great. Awesome. Honestly, like, yeah, sure. But I don't want just some, like, simple everyday love. Now let me explain. I'm inside now. It's hot. Life is so freaking cool. And I want to live my life experiencing everything. I know in my soul that I am capable of anything I put my mind to. Honestly, nowadays, it's really except rare to come married. across other people. You're capable of anything you put your mind to except getting married. <laughs> Right, which she hasn't done yet, Miss Miss. I have been single for 21 years, and this is a chick too that uh, would own the venues if she walked in. She would own the dating apps, right? She's uh, she's an attractive girl. She's a hottie, right? I'm, I'll give her that. She's young and hot, so she has she has guys at her at her footsteps daily. Probably just offering to give her and shower her with gifts and money and all this. So. This is uh, this is actually, I mean, I'm not even surprised. Like, she's very entitled. She's very spoiled because she knows she could have pretty much any guy she wants at this point in her life. Um, I think she's she's wasting it. She's wasting it away by, miss, you know, not trying to find a husband um, and instead just ranting about how she could have anything she wants. Well, not for long, honey, you know, because father time comes for all of us, even you, even you. One day you will be... 31 and you'll no longer be 21 and then one day you'll wake up and you'll be 41 and then you'll wake up another day you'll be 51 61 71 um, so yeah you do not want to waste these prime years uh, and it just it just goes to show how she doesn't value the fact that she has so many guys and just so many options I mean she's just sit, sitting here talking about how you know she's gonna take over the world <laughs> I mean just basically because she won the genetic gene pool lottery um, thanks to her parents, nothing that she did, you know, but I will give her credit where she has not done the duck lips I've seen a lot of these younger women do the duck lips already. She has not done the duck lips credit where credit is due She doesn't have the fake eyelashes. I don't see any hula hoop earrings or a nose ring or any dumb like sleeve tattoos so uh, Kudos for her. Um, it looks like this is her natural hair color for the most part outside of some highlights I mean, I could pick these women apart all day long, man. Professional POA here. So I see all this stuff, I'm, like, within seconds. Um, however, I don't really care for this necklace she's wearing. She's wearing the necklace of a serpent, a snake. And that always kind of throws me off when I see a woman, like, with a ring that's of a snake or a necklace of a snake. Um, as you guys know in the Bible, <laughs> how Jesus feels about serpents. Um, so... In any case, uh, yeah, they're always like out to do wicked or some sort of evil, so be careful. Uh, in any case, um, yeah, let's let her continue. Mine too. Honestly, nowadays it's really rare to come across other people that feel the same way. I don't want some love where they just like tick all the boxes. I want like a deep soul connection where they have the same goals and excitement for life as I do. Um, so not only does she want you to tick all the boxes, but you have to have the same goals, exact same goals and, you know, values and, I mean, basically the same lifestyle. Values are fine, but the same lifestyle that she does and uh, that's going to be a boring relationship. I mean, yeah, it's great if you have the same values and beliefs, but you don't need to be doing the exact same thing, the exact same career, the exact same business, 
it'll get boring real fast. It's it's good to have kind of have your own differences, right? A little bit, not a whole lot. You know, you don't if you're like a hardcore leftist, you don't want to marry a hardcore conservative. Right? I mean, it's, you're just gonna bat, you're just gonna conflict a lot. But as long as you're in the same ballpark, um, yeah. However, she's got the looks, but now her voice and her mouthiness and her attitudes like <laughs> quickly turning me off. Where we get to like experience, travel the world, build multi-million dollar businesses that inspire people together. I want someone that stimulates me emotionally, physically, and intellectually, not just text me good morning because they're supposed to. I have so much excitement and passion towards life and my goals and the things that I want to do that I want to equally feel that for another person. Again, with these chicks, the, the thing that always uh, puts me off about these women, I mean, she's on the right path, I get it, but the thing that puts me off is they only talk about what they want. They never talk about what they bring, right? It's always about what I want, what I demand, what I require, but they never talk about, well, I'm gonna bring this to the table, I'm gonna do that for my man, I'm gonna make sure he's taken care of, I'm gonna make sure he's, he's never hungry when he's around me, you know, I'm gonna make sure I take cooking classes, I'm gonna find out what his favorite dish is, uh, he loves going to these car shows. I'm gonna find out where the local car shows are so we, I can take him to these car shows. I'm gonna, you know, make sure I plan out his birthday. I'm gonna make sure that, you know, his his parents know that I'm a good woman. I mean, I, first thing I'm gonna do, invite them over and I'm gonna cook for them. I mean, something, right? That's what guys wanna hear. That's what we wanna hear. Because that is so just off the wall rare these days to hear a woman say things like that instead of, well, I demand this, I demand that, I want this from him, I expect him to look like this, be this tall. Stop with the demands, right? Stop. You're not going to get what you want by, you know, by doing that. I mean, it's like me as a content creator, like just coming on, like creating a new, a new YouTube channel or something, going, guys, I demand you watch this, I demand you do that, I demand you follow me, I demand you like this. You, you know, it's like, even if I don't, I put out crap content, I do it anyway. You know, no, I have to put out value, right? I have to give you guys great advice. I have to teach you things that help you in life. Otherwise, I don't get anything, right? You guys would hate me. You guys wouldn't subscribe. But instead, I get thousands of thank you letters and emails and messages and, you know, every single day because I'm here to provide value, right? I don't talk about, oh, I want this. Dude, do this, do that, get into mastery. Get into my alpha program. Oh, subscribe. I, I don't even I don't even pitch anything. You notice that how like a lot of content creators will like. St uh, this is terrible, by the way. They'll either start their uh, the in the beginning of their video with an intro, like a useless thirty second intro. I got rid of my intro years ago. I don't even have an intro anymore, right? I just jump right into the content, right into the value. I don't want to waste your time because I don't like watching content like that. I want the person to just jump right into it. Don't waste my time. So I do that for you, right? Because I don't want to waste your time. And also, do you hear me stopping the video like five minutes in to pitch a product or, you know, like, oh, look at this new tige whatever hair hair gel that I've been using. Guys, it's so awesome. And look at how my skin. I don't do any of that. I just give you guys pure value from beginning to end, right? The only time I will pitch mastery, which is my product you should jump into, click the link below. The only time I will pitch my product is at the end of the video, okay? I pitch it at the end where it's not an, an annoyance, I'm not stopping the video, I'm not stopping the value to try to ask for anything. No, I give you all of the value for the video and then some first, right? And then at the end of the video, uh, before I close up, I, yeah, I do pitch mastery, right? But not until the end, right? Whereas many content creators like pitch it in the middle of the, in the, middle of the video or first thing before they even open up. It's usually new YouTubers who can't get a following. Like they'll open the video with like, guys, before we get into this today, I'd really appreciate it. If you like and subscribe, I don't ask you to do any of that, do I? Not until the end, until I've given you the value and you think I've earned your subscription, then I go, hey guys, like, comment, subscribe, and then also drop some comments. Get into mastery, right? I don't say that until the end, why? Because I'm here to give value, not take. Right? And, and all that's optional, by the way. If you want to get in, great. It's a great way to support my work. Awesome. But I don't ask for things. right? So it's rare to find women out there who will just offer things without asking for anything. And just be like, oh, I'll do this, that, and this for you. you know, I'll do this. You know, um, I had a six-girl dating rotation just a few years ago. You'll, uh, I used to talk about that in my videos. 
in 2019, before I started dating my girl seriously. She was part of that six girl dating rotation, okay? How did she rise to the top and, and wipe out the other five chicks I was dating? Um, here's how. She just kept offering value, right? She never asked me for things. She never took things. She never was like, hey, buy me this, buy me that. No, she was like equally paying for stuff and anything she could afford. Of course, I like to travel a lot. I like to stay in nice rooms, nice hotels. I like to stay on a strip. I mean, there's certain things that just not everyone can afford, right? That I'm in a good place, I can afford. I would do it for you know, family members. I would do it for good friends of mine. And of course, I would do it for her as well. Like, yeah, I just come along. And even then, she's like, I'm gonna pay for the meals. I'm gonna pay for the tips. I'm gonna pay for, you know, uh, anything you wanna buy for yourself, I'll pay for that. So she, she buys things where, she helps where she can, right? But um, most of all, too, the reason why the other chicks that were part of my uh, six girl dating rotation didn't work out. You know, they're all great girls, by the way. I don't really have much bad things to say about them, but the reason why I started to just cut them off at was, um, you know, there would be times where there was a little bit of a inconsideration that I caught or selfishness. I mean, like my dog Cash, for example, right? He's kind of a good test for a lot of these women, right? I have my dogs with me all the time. Um, if they would complain about it or if they would be just unhelpful or I mean, you know, say I was carrying a bunch of things. I got cash in one hand. I'm holding like waters. If the girl would just be like walking along and not go, hey, let me grab that, Matt. Let me let me carry this one for you. You got your hands full. It's a turnoff for me, right? It's a turnoff, right? Especially when my guy friends are like, dude, let me give you a hand with this. Let me give you a hand with that. I mean, I'm the same way. I'm like, you need help, man? I'll help you out. If the person is not considerate in that way and they're just gonna watch me carry my handicapped dog and like three waters and a bag and they're just like walking along and not helping, that's a huge turnoff. So that was like, that's the first thing that really puts me off, was starting to put me off about, let's say like a couple of the girls in my dating rotation, right? But they were phenomenal outside of that, but it was little things like that, I, it, it starts to put me off, right? I'm like, okay, long term, I don't want a teammate like that. Long term, I want a partner who's going to like help out, right? It's going to not be so selfish or inconsiderate, right? I, that's really the key word is inconsiderate. Like you have to be able to look and go, okay. Um, or another one of the girls I was dating in my dating rotation, and granted these chicks were young, so I get it, but these are sometimes habits that they weren't able to break, and it continued as I was still seeing them. One girl. One chick, they'll probably watch this and like totally send me a hateful text message. You asshole, I did that, I helped you. Um, one other girl would uh, like, for example, like I, I just bring it back to my dogs. Um, like I would get them ice water, right? So usually I'd go through a drive-thru, I'll get like a soda or something, you know, from the drive-thru, not this, a bottle, but like a soda. And then I would ask for like, you know, a couple of extra like ice waters for them. They love ice water. So, any times I would be out of water for these guys and say the chick I was seeing would like go into uh, you know the Raising Canes or the Chick-fil-A to get herself something, I mean, common courtesy would be to ask like, hey, do your dogs need ice water? I could get a couple of cups for them, right? Or just bring it out, because you know I'm, we're always out of ice water, like at least in the car, you know, especially LA or Vegas, it's super hot. Yeah, we should always have ice water. Um, so, like, yeah, one girl I was seeing, she would, like, go into the fast food or wherever and just get get things for herself, and she would never ask, like, do you want anything? Can I get you anything? Can I get the dogs, like, some free ice water? She would just go out there, go in there, and then come out and get her own stuff. And it's that inconsideration that really puts me off. With anybody, right? With anybody. Because um, it tells me the person's a bit entitled. And, of course, if I do that, if I go in and I don't, I don't ask the chick, like, hey, is there anything I can get you, right, just basic consideration, she would get pissed. So, yeah, a lot of hypocrisy there. So that was another girl I had to just, I just started to cut her off, and I just started doing my own thing. And really, all that happened was I started shifting my time away from those type of chicks that I, were in my dating rotation, as hot as they were, as attractive as they were as easily replaceable as I was, because, you know, and they ended up all replacing me, which is fine. The, I started spending less time with them and more time with my main chick, who is my girlfriend now, who was helpful, who is considered, who would who would never go into a fast food place without going, hey, should I get the dog's water? Hey, should I, you know, do you want anything? You know, I mean, just ask me. Most times I'm just going to say no, right, unless she's grabbing them water. I'd be like, yeah, just get it. 
right? But uh, but to just go in there and completely ignore my needs, yeah, that's yeah. If we're going to be dating in any capacity, <laughs> um, I need that. I need that from that person, right? I need to make sure that okay, you're not just thinking about yourself. So, in any case, <laughs> I'm not going to ramble on about that. As always, let's uh, let's let her finish here. And honestly, if I don't, I am so fine with not being with someone. Because I know that the right person would only add to my life and add to my passions that we can grow together and help push each other to experience even more things. I just want to like chill at home and take naps. I want to experience the world <laughs> and everything that comes with being a part of the human experience. Okay, I, it, it sounds like to me um, that she's, she's not even looking for a dude. She's just looking for a dude who fits the suit. And I mean, she's not really looking for a relationship. Like many of these modern women, they're just looking for a guy who fits their suit, right? Like the Johnny Bravo metaphor I use from Brady Bunch. You guys are old enough to remember Brady Bunch, right? The reruns I, I watched growing up. Where Greg was uh, auditioning to be a rock star. And they were just looking for somebody who fit this Johnny Bravo suit. Right? They didn't care about his talent. They didn't care about his, his aspirations, his goals. They just, he fit the suit, you're the guy. So that's what a lot of I see from a lot of these females like her. They're just looking for somebody who fits the suit, you know, and um, instead of looking to give to, you know, I mean, yeah, just look to bring value to the table. So, I mean, she's young. I get it. She's young, but she's also pretty immature for a female at 21. Different if you're a dude at 21, right? We're all like goofballs at 21 and super immature. We mature later than women. We don't have that kind of like social exposure that women have um, at that age, but she should be, I don't know. I, I just feel, feel like she's a bit spoiled and she kind of needs to understand like the world does not revolve around her. Yes, you're a great looking girl, but the world does not revolve around you, okay? Doesn't revolve around all of your wants and needs. You have to bring something to the table and you can just stop with all these unicorn fantasies of the perfect guy, we're gonna build a zillion dollar business together that shapes humanity. Yeah, it's great to have those aspirations, but don't talk about it, just do it, okay? Just go do it, because I've noticed that when it comes to success, successful people, is that they don't talk about what they're gonna do, they just go do it. Because the last thing they wanna do is fail at it, and then everyone goes, oh, I thought you were gonna do this with your life, ha ha ha. Right? Even when I started my pickup business, which became successful after everyone was telling me I was crazy for quitting my six-figure corporate job with AT&T, uh, the Fortune 100, people, I did not tell people I was starting, starting a pickup company. Right, I did not tell them, people, I just did it. I just did it. I might have told my younger brother, but that was it. I didn't tell anybody else, didn't tell my parents, nobody. I just went and did it. Okay, And then it became successful because that's what people do who become successful you don't talk about it you just do so she's doing way too much talking I can tell she is a talker and not really a doer she's just kind of a talker because that's how you end up single 21 years and uh, not married and never been in a relationship but again the elephant in the room how many dudes has she slept with that's all dudes would want to know but as always gentlemen drop your comments below let me know what you think of tonight's coaching video anything you'd like to add anything you'd like to share Please drop them in the comments below and I will see you there in my comments. Drop those comments below, guys. I'd love to hear them. And till next time, this is M from the 33 Secrets. Don't forget to smash that like button below. Go ahead and smash it right now. Do it for the DeLorean. Smash that like button below. Also, hit that notification bell right next to it so you're notified whenever I release a brand new coaching video here on the YouTube. More importantly, guys, Please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Helps me out a ton when you guys actually subscribe to my channel. So please make sure you're subscribed to my channel as well. And for all you guys who want to support my work and all of this red pill, gold pill, and platinum pill content that I am teaching you even further, the best way to do that is by jumping into my monthly online coaching program, Seven Months to Mastery, where I am teaching guys just like you how to go out there and approach it close. Thank you. Dude, this car gets so much attention, it's crazy. How to go out there and approach and close the youngest, hottest, and most beautiful looking women on the planet. I'm talking about eights, nines, and tens. The same exact type of women that I teach my students all over the world to go out there and approach and close. And we're making it happen every single week, guys. I kid you not, every single week, all over the world, no matter what kind of 
pandemic is going on, no matter what kind of virus is going on, we are making things happen and continuing to live our lives 24-7, 365 days a year. And I want you to join us. And it's the best way to support my work as well. So you're killing two birds with one stone there. And it's real easy to get signed up. All you need to do is click that link below in my description box. It will take you over to my website where you can get signed up right now. It just takes two seconds. So do that now and I will see you in my next coaching video. All right, my hightail out of here. Yeah, it's, it's really difficult to shoot in this car, guys. It just gets so much attention, but I've been getting a lot of requests from you guys like, hey, shoot a vid, shoot vids while you're driving. And I'm like, okay, A, that's dangerous, but I'm keeping my eyes on the road. Uh, I've got the camera kind of like mounted to my windshield right now. But uh, B, the biggest reason is it's, uh, it's really hard to shoot in this car with people like honking and waving and whipping out their cell phone cameras like, oh my gosh, it's DeLorean. Yeah, so. Uh, Ha, ha, ha.